So today we're going to discuss a little bit more into web pen testing. Uh, I know in the last video we went over some very basic SQL injection stuff. We used the uh, SQL map a little bit. I showed you how to test for very basic input validation vulnerabilities up on um, you know websites and stuff like that. Uh, so today we're going to talk about cross-site scripting or commonly referred to as XSS um, as most people in some circles call it. And basically what that is, is what it means. Um, the easiest way to explain it is that uh, it's input validation, much like a SQL injection on a web page, uh, but this has to deal with forms. Now there's two types of S XSS uh, vulnerabilities. There's a reflective and then there's a persistent. Now the reflective value is think of it as computer memory right so when you have stuff on computer memory not saved to your hard drive if you shut your computer off all that stuff goes away you lose all that right so reflective attacks means that um, if you go to some sort of form and it's uh, vulnerable to an XSS or cross-site scripting vulnerability uh, you would enter in some evil code most of the more more nine out of ten times I guess you could say that you use JavaScript uh, you know you could do stealing cookies, session hijacking, all that good stuff. And we'll get into that in later videos. But um, for today, I'm just going to explain how it works and show you a couple examples. Uh, so anyway, with the reflective attack is basically um, you put some evil JavaScript in there, and if it's vulnerable and injectable and it accepts it, uh, at that point you can pass that URL over to you know some user via phishing scam or email uh, deal. Um, and get them to click on that and steal their credentials or redirect them to another web page or you could even do some crafty stuff and overlay uh, you know another login box on top of the original login box and this way when they logged in it would send those credentials to you so uh, we'll get into that again in other videos um, so now that's a reflective attack and the other attack is a persistent attack and that's exactly what it means it's persistent that means you're actually able to inject code into a website and then actually writes it to the website so this way anytime somebody else visits the web page uh, they are forced to run that code without knowing it now this is usable mostly on um, you know some kind of forums shout boxes comments uh, you know stuff like that uh, there's a lot of good web pages out there like WordPress does a pretty good job of preventing that kind of stuff but um, you know for those out there that uh, are using you know free scripts they downloaded from somewhere or wrote their own and don't have the knowledge for input validation uh, you know maybe you're vulnerable and to be honest with you XSS attacks or cross-site scripting attacks uh, are very common and very hard to prevent so uh, they are also very 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 dangerous uh, they're probably a little bit more dangerous in some cases uh, than SQL injections. So without further ado, let's get into our Kali Linux box here. You don't need any special tools for this, guys. This web page I have up here is called DVWA for short, or in long, it is Damn Vulnerable Web App. Now this is really pretty much just a web application that um, we'll make a video on installing this as a lab, but it's basically a lab where you can test some of your pen uh, web pen testing skills on. Now there's other ones out there too, uh, made by OWASP, um, and we'll we'll get into that in another video. That one's a little bit more advanced. This will work for what I'm trying to show you on XSS. So as I said, uh, in vulnerability, uh, reflected cross-site scripting. Now uh, there's a couple of different ways to test this. You can write JavaScript if you wanted to. Uh, I like to be more covert and just uh, you know write in some HTML codes. So if I did H1 for heading and I'm just going to use the example I already have in here as high, uh, I can actually make that happen and post it. Now, here's the thing. It may come up as a heading, or the internal coding of the website may make the results appear as with an H1 tag, you know, using CSS or something like that. Uh, the other way to do it is to make two of them, and you can make one bold. So, for instance, if I went ahead and just made this bold, with the HTML code here and just put this in here and then uh, I just did space world high should be in bold and world should be in regular text I like to do that just in case like I said they're using some sort of CSS for their output uh, whereas you know you may not be able to tell if it's vulnerable or not so let's go ahead and click submit and sure enough it says hello which is prepended that's hard-coded into their script 
and high of course is in bold because we put the bold tags around it, the HTML tags, and world is just regular, it is not bold. So we know that this is vulnerable to a cross-site scripting attack. Now, if you were to inject some evil code in there, let's say, uh, let's just write some quick JavaScript here. Yeah, I already got one saved in there. And if we were to go ahead and do that and hit submit, we'll get a pop-up box here, an alert box saying hello. Um, now here's the thing, once you click OK, it kind of goes away. But you can see here, it's now in the URL because the name parameter here is vulnerable to the uh, XSS injection. So now, of course, as we said earlier, you would take this link and send it on over to whoever you're trying to uh, get to click your link, steal their credentials, uh, cookies, session data, uh, all sorts of things like that, redirect them to a different web page, whatever. There's endless possibilities with that, guys, and we will get into that too. Uh, it does not hurt to know a little bit of JavaScripting uh, and a little bit of HTML for some testing. So that pretty much covers reflected cross-site scripting attacks. Now we're going to get into the XSS persistent or XSS stored attacks. Okay. Now, again, this will be useful on like a comments box, a shout box, um, you know, any kind of news article, something where you can submit your data. Uh, for other users to see okay so it may work on some older forums it may work on some newer forums that have you know an XSS vulnerability in it you don't know until you try it right or you do a uh, a web pen test and we'll get into some of those tools uh, in other videos too I'm going to show you guys how to use things like um, Vega uh, OWASP um, uh, OWASP Z, uh, Z attack proxy or zap uh, and then we're going to be using burp suits we're going to be using a bunch of different things so stay tuned for that any case, getting back to uh, persistent or stored cross-site scripting attacks. So here we just have a basic form here, ask you for a name and a message. So we're assuming this is maybe some sort of customized script that you know you're posting. Hey, how's everybody doing on xyzsite.com today? You know something. Uh, so we can just make up anything here. We can just put in you know our name Hacksaw and our message. This is where we're going to want to put our evil code, quote unquote. Okay. So now let's uh, go ahead and just do the same thing with the script. And we're just going to make this do in another alert. And do and close that up. OK, so now once I hit sign guestbook, and again, this works on guestbooks, you know, chat boxes, whatever. Anywhere you can input data. Let's go ahead and click sign guestbook. And of course, we got our alert box and it says hello NetSec. And we hit OK. Now, here's the thing our message is blank, right? So if we wanted to make it inconspicuous, so to speak, if we're trying to steal, you know, session cookies or something like that, uh, we can just write in this. And we can again do the same script attack. And let's go ahead and close this up. Okay. Now, after this, or before this even, let's just do it both ways, just so I can show you. And after that, we'll go here to the bottom, and we'll do guys. Now, let's go ahead and click Sign Guestbook. And, of course, Hello NetSec comes up. And now our second box comes up. Hello again. And that's our second injection, okay, by the user Bob. The first one was by the user Haxer. Now you can see, in Haxer, we didn't enter an actual message, regular text. So it kind of looks suspicious, right, because the message is blank. Now this time, the second time around, we entered in hello, guys. And it just looks like we're named Bob, and we're posting hello, guys. And really, we have some evil code behind that. So now... It's actually saved into the website, whether it's saving it into a SQL database to fetch it again later, or it's saving it into a flat file. It doesn't really matter at that point. So let's just go back to our Windows box here, and we can see we're on the same site here. And now if I refresh this page, you can see the first box comes up, hello, NetSec. And the second box comes up, hello again. Right, right so you can see that it's persistent. It's saved in the web page. And again, if we went to it again and we just refreshed it, 
again it's going to come up with those two boxes now you can imagine uh, what you could do here uh, you could do um, you know redirection to another evil web page you can write some JavaScript in there that'll overlay the login boxes like I said um, you can I don't know maybe even do a Java exploit on somebody make them download a interpreter shell something to that effect right so it's it's pretty crafty of what you can do with this stuff guys um, so that's pretty much it for that uh, we went through very basic SQL injections I've actually been learning a lot more about that especially using SQL map uh, I feel pretty comfortable moving to the next stage of that with you guys XSS is pretty simple uh, so you know there's no real need to keep going there unless of course I come across more information and obviously once I'm comfortable with that I'll pass it along uh, so um, SQL map it's it's a super cool tool I really didn't realize um, you know how much how much you can do with that I mean it's a it's a dangerous tool um, today I learned uh, about using uh, burp suite and um, using that with Firefox or any kind of browser actually to use that as a proxy and if you go to a web page and let's say it has a, a, a login form on it uh, you can actually go ahead and try to log in with some bogus name and the HTTP header and response that's going to give you will be frozen in between the proxy of using um, be frozen in in burp suite so you have to step through it manually right uh, and so you can actually copy that put it in a flat file give uh, SQL map the tack R switch and actually instead of putting in all of that header um, information in there like session PHP sesh ID or you know the cookies stuff like that instead of putting that in and having to type it out exactly right uh, SQL map actually recursively goes through it and parses out the needed information correctly and will actually go ahead and do that for you so pretty awesome uh, we will be making a video on uh, you know some of that stuff as well so that's it guys for now uh, I know it's a short video but stay tuned for the next stuff